This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by my stupendous, awesome, legendary supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support Shadowversity on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash Shadowversity. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and a little while ago I made a video about the earliest steel sword ever made that I know about. There might actually be some other swords that are made out of steel that date a bit earlier to this, but still, this is the one where I was able to get the most information on. And having said that, it was really hard to find even the information I did find on this sword because there's a bit of an annoying thing that still exists. Even in this modern day where information is so accessible, there's actually a lot of academic information that is still held behind kind of like a paywall or wall. And uh, like in one instance, I did have to sign up to a website to get access to five academic papers per month for free. Anything more than that, you have to pay. All the other ones, you just have to pay to even get access to them. And what's really annoying about this is that there is some really intriguing and awesome information that has already been thoroughly researched, peer-reviewed, published, and all that stuff that the lay person, the average person, can't find. And because of that, some really incorrect assumptions and information are still being perpetuated and taught in high schools and everything. And so before making my video, you couldn't just Google search oldest steel sword ever found and find reliable, accurate information. I know because I tried to do this in my research and so it took a lot of digging and even then, I haven't found the oldest one, just one that happens to be really, really old. And I only even heard about this sword, so I had a data point to try and dig for, is because of a separate kind of interest. First, huge interest in swords, right? But I'm also a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint. And I've already made a whole video on my interest in relation to this regarding a thing called the Sword of Laban. It's a sword that appears in the Book of Mormon, and according to the date of this account, it happened at 600 BC, the sword is capable of chopping off someone's head was made out of steel and was located in Jerusalem. Now, people who want to try and challenge the Book of Mormon, which they're perfectly in their right to do, have tried to point out and say, no, steel didn't even exist in 600 BC, so the Sword of Laban is clearly a load of bull, and therefore the Book of Mormon is untrue. So then, when the Vera Jericho sword was discovered in an archaeological dig, members of my church are being rather interested in it, which was the only reason why I even found out about this. But I have a double interest, separate to my religious interest, I'm deeply interested in swords in general. When was the first steel sword in, ever found? And so I really tried to dig to find information about this sword, which is really hard to find, and if I didn't actually find out about uh, this mysterious thing called the Vera Jericho sword, I wouldn't have even had a data point to start with, and I still wouldn't know. And when you type oldest steel sword in the world, the unfortunate thing is, as soon as you add religion into the mix, people get really defensive about this. And I've said, even in my sort of Laban video, you don't have to believe in the Book of Mormon or anything to find this interesting. My whole video was just a speculative video on what it might have looked like looking at archaeological reference points, the Vera Jericho sword being the primary one that we can draw information from. But because there are so many people out there who have such a negative view on religion, and then in an even more narrow subset to that, who so there are some people who have this real strong vitriol against against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as Mormons, nickname, we don't really like to go by that. Anything that seems to support the Book of Mormon, and not only that, okay, because this doesn't prove the Book of Mormon to be true, more so, it just simply removes one of the criticisms that people love to try and lob against the Book of Mormon, but even that, they get really defensive about, and then they start to exercise an extreme level of confirmation bias uh, to try and disprove this thing out of, I don't know, insecurity, defensiveness, doing the exact same thing in which people of religious faith are usually more commonly criticized of doing, which is using confirmation bias to try and support their own religious beliefs, but they've switched this around, using this confirmation bias really faulty and sometimes just outwards deception to try and debunk anything that has the slightest chance of taking away one of their, I guess, points of criticism. Now, I want to be clear, the main reason why I'm making this video is to not defend my own faith, but to defend my own credibility as a sword enthusiast and my own research methodology and objectivity, because, uh, of course, people have tried to criticize my video on the Vera Jericho sword, claiming that I'm an outright liar, that I'm trying to deceive my audience, and the Vera Jericho sword is not even steel, it's only iron, and I'm saying it's steel, misrepresenting the facts and information to 
to try and, you know, from my own bias, uh, make this connection to substantiate to say that the Sword of Laban could have actually existed in 600 BC. The hilarious and also really disappointing thing about this is that if they just went into the description and checked my sources, they would have seen that my information was actually valid and accurate. I have sources in the description linking to the museum journal itself, which is stating the very Jericho sword to be made out of, you know, mild steel, which was established by microscopy x-ray analysis. Though I can see why people are getting confused, and there are some things to try and explain so we can understand exactly what's going on. And then I'll share even additional evidence that complex steel manufacture, it not only existed in 600 BC, but we have documented evidence, already archaeologically studied, peer-reviewed journals, you know, published on this, that date to 600 years before the Vera Jericho sword. Now, I like to respond to my critics because I have been wrong in the past, and that certainly establishes a precedent that it's very possible for me to be wrong in the future. And if that's the case, I want to know when I am. And when I am wrong, when I'm shown clear evidence and stuff like that, guess what? I correct myself and I let you guys know. But when I am criticized unfairly, or what I have said has been misrepresented, and not only that, if they just actually have a legitimate criticism that they're not misrepresenting me, and I simply disagree for other you know, facts and points of evidence that I understand and have read, well, I like to respond and share them with you. I've already done this before in regards to my thoughts on leather armor, which is still a fairly open discussion, okay? I'm still you know, wanting to hear further you know, evidences that people are putting forward about how prevalent leather armor was in the medieval period. But before I get that information, my opinion, of course, stays where it's at. But anyway, that's on that. And now we're talking about the criticism against me about the very Jericho sword. And so, okay, people have tried to say that, no, 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 this, this isn't, you know, steel. It's iron. And in fact, if you go to the website, okay, the uh, Israel Museum itself, and look up the very Jericho sword, it will be listed as an iron sword found at 600 BC. So does that mean it's not steel? No, 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 no. You see, steel is iron, okay? In fact, it's usually over 99% iron. And so calling uh, something that is steel iron isn't a misidentification. In fact, it seems to be a common practice in academia. I will show direct you know, reference points from academic journals, okay, in which they are calling you know, a blade or even a chisel or pick or whatever, uh, iron and then saying it is carburized iron which we know as steel so this iron dagger is carburized they still call it iron okay so it's, it, there's this practice to call even steel artifacts iron in the academic community and i think that is simply because these artifacts come from the Iron Age, okay? And so they want to make that connection that this is an iron artifact, therefore from the Iron Age. And they also are identifying it according to what material this artifact is mostly comprised of. So I have several reference points identifying the very Jericho sword to be made out of steel specifically, even when it is also called iron, and examples where this is done with other artifacts identified as iron, but are actually steel. The main reference point is this quote from the Israel Museum Journal itself. Link to this reference in the description. Micro radiographic x-ray examination and photography of the sword indicate that the hilt, the ridge, and the blade were prepared separately and then forged together by hammering. Metallurgic analysis of the sample taken from the blade proves that it was made of mild steel and that the iron was deliberately hardened into steel attesting to the technical knowledge of the blacksmith. I've also emailed the Israel Museum to get access to the full article because this is only, you know, a small snippet kind of preview of actually what's in it. And we're lucky that we even have that because I've not been able to find this full article anywhere on the internet. So I'm going right back to the source, okay? Because I want to see what else is written about this thing, okay? I want the full information and stuff. But I have found other points, you know, articles, referencing this sword to be made out of steel as well. So double confirmation, putting it all together, well, there we go. Yes, it is mild steel. The other reference point is this article, which actually talks about the process of being able to find traces of perlite in badly corroded iron. So this is actually explaining the process, not explaining the specific sword 
it, and what's in it. But through explaining the process, they say, we have found pearlite structures in uh, several artifacts ranging from da, 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 and Vera Jericho, linking to the Vera Jericho sword, saying we, this Vera Jericho sword was one of the artifacts that we studied under this process, and look what we found. Pearlite structures in iron making them steel. I've also found this PDF online, which also talks about finding, you know, carbon structures, pearlite structures in iron uh, with really old artifacts. And then we see this shot of the Vera Jericho sword showing, look, this is one of the ones that we've studied. And in the very next slide, we have this shot showing the very pearlite structure of the Vera Jericho sword. This is actually the x-ray, okay? Showing, look, there is the carbon in this iron of the sword it is mild steel. But you see, I want as much information about this as possible. So I went into the references and you see these, you know, references which are a bit confusing. So I'm like, ah, but look, there's the name of something. Anatolian Studies, volume whatever, whatever. So I looked up that and after doing much Googling and jumping from site to site to site, I found a site in which gave me access to that article after siding up and everything like that, in which gave me more additional information of steel artifacts being found in the Anatolian region and the Jordan region. And finally gave me such a good reliable reference point to some really complex steel artifacts. And in fact, it's so interesting, I'm going to be making a dedicated video on the subject, kind of companion one to this, but it is its own thing. I want people when they Google, when was steel invented, to be able to find good reliable information. And that's going to be the informational basis point for that video, which will be coming out. So good to keep an eye out for it. When was steel invented? But in this video, I'm defending my credibility and sharing evidence about the Vera Jericho sword specifically. And so, I've shown you my references. Now let's look at the practice in academia of calling steel artifacts iron. And my reference point for this comes from that very article, Iron in Anatolia and, uh, and the nature of the, Hittite, of the Hittite iron industry. It's a mouthful. So this is from Anatolian Studies, volume 35, pages 80 to 81. More striking is the analysis of a small, middle Bronze Age iron blade from Pella, Jordan. What did they call it? An iron blade, okay? This is an iron blade on record. In the museum, when you look this up, it will identify it as an iron blade. Now listen to what they say about this iron blade. Perhaps coming from a miniature notch chisel axe, made of carburized iron, i.e. steel, in which it was quickly cooled, as indicated by the microstructure, probably by quenching in water, an act which imparts even greater strength to carburized iron, since the artifact is one of the few known pieces of steel of Bronze Age date, we cannot yet place it in any reasonable kind of technological context. Meaning they don't know if the practice of making steel artifacts of this type in that age was widespread and common, but they do know someone made it because we have the artifact right here. And what did they call it? They called it iron even though it is steel. And this isn't the only point in the article where they refer to steel artifacts simply by calling them iron. Later on, on page 81 and 82, they say this. The most spectacular find is an iron pick from the 12th to 11th century BC settlement on a Mount Adir in the northern Galilee. Almost perfectly preserved, the pick had been carburized, quenched, and mildly tempered. All the treatments known in effective steel production until the 19th century AD. Steel artifact, called iron. Now, I don't like that the academic community seems to do this because it creates confusion. And like the example we're currently having here, where people look up this artifact and it's like, but it says iron on the thing. This is the thing that we have to understand. Calling something iron does not disqualify the presence of carbon in it. Unlike calling something steel, which automatically identifies the presence of iron in it, because steel has to have iron, in fact, up to 99%. So we can understand why the confusion exists. And for the skeptical minded person who looks up, you know, this thing on the website and sees the very Jericho sword being listed as iron, the most objective way of regarding it is to probably responding with a bit of confusion. Is it iron or is it steel? But of course we understand the context. Calling a steel artifact iron is actually not a misdesignation. It is correct. And it seems to be the reason why they're doing it in the academic community. But jumping to the polar opposite conclusion that all the other references I'm referring to must be false and I must be lying because it clearly says iron 
tie in here is of course massive confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance. And people accuse me of that all the time because I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and they are expecting that I must be interpreting my faith the way they are interpreting it to see so many contradictions. But if I am, you know, an objective, rational person and I hold this belief, I must be contextualizing it in a way which makes logical sense and satisfies me intellectually. Otherwise, if I truly am rational, I would be running into problems, wouldn't I? Either that or I am irrational, but I will let my own record and, I guess, reputation speak for itself in that regard. It's actually kind of funny because people have such a negative and skewed interpretation of what my faith is, which of course different to mine, but again they are imposing that view. I have to interpret the way they are, and if they would want to see the way my faith does not contradict these things, they would need to try and understand it the way I understand it, not the way they do. Anyway, but when they get to know who I am and what my standard is in study and research, they actually can't marry the two. How can this guy be a Mormon? Even though we don't like the term Mormon, we're just members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Or just Church of Jesus Christ, for shorthand. It does not compute. They really struggle in marrying those two things. And I just have to laugh to myself. It's unfortunate. I want to be clear, some of the skepticism around the very Jericho sword are perfectly valid and I can see where the confusion comes from. They look, oh look, it says iron sword on the museum thing and I've had really productive conversations with some of the viewers in the comment sections below, sharing different data points and references and stuff like that and the ultimate conclusions in those productive conversations is like, yeah we agree, this is obviously mild steel and at that point we didn't know why they were referring it to as iron, now we do know because of these other references I've been able to share. But some of the criticisms are so profoundly disingenuous and dishonest. The most prominent one that I was able to find, I'm not going to share the, the link because you can't comment on the post, it's old now and closed anyway. And of course it was one that was attacking me from the more religious angles, claiming that I am only saying that the Vera Jericho sword is steel to confirm my own religious belief. No, if I wasn't a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I'm a sword enthusiast. I would have huge amounts of interest in the Vera Jericho sword and would want to know what it's made out of and would be blown away over the moon, like, wow, this thing is mild steel, that's amazing, it's 600 BC and made out of mild steel. I'll be sharing this information with you and applying just as equal a level of objectivity as much as I can in my own research. Anyway, this more prominent criticism actually really misrepresents certain facts, and I sent a message to the author, and, you know, he actually responded, and he was a bit more respectful this time, and was willing to admit that he got it very, very wrong in his uh, criticism, because he said, said that there was a retraction made where a member of my church even was saying that the very Jericho sword wasn't steel, it was only iron. And then he shares a quote where an artifact was misidentified as being steel and was actually had no carbon content in, which was a dagger. It was a short curved dagger and the quote he actually mentions refers to the dagger saying this dagger is not actually steel. And then he's saying see the very Jericho sword sword, not being a dagger, has been disproven and debunked and everyone who has read that article, because again, confirmation bias is like, see it's been debunked and I'm a liar and I'm just completely blinded by my religion and I'm absolute full of bull. When if anyone actually read this thing they would see, they're saying dagger? The Vera Jerica sword is a one meter long sword, not curved, it's straight. Clearly one thing is not like the other. Maybe this thing is not referring to the thing that you're thinking it's referring to. The other argument that people make when I establish fairly convincingly, in my opinion, that the Vera Jericho sword is absolutely mild steel. We even have the very x-ray showing the perlite structures in the ferrite, which is just the technical word for iron. They say calling it steel is still disingenuous because mild steel isn't really real steel, it's mild steel. You're, you're implying something to be steel when it's really, you know, closer to iron. If that's the case, why is there even a designation of mild steel in the first place? Like, like literally, when I go down to my hardware store and I want to buy by steel, a steel product, steel rods and stuff, guess what type of steel it is? Mild steel. Mild steel is almost the industry standard for general steel usage. Mild steel is so much stronger than iron. It's the whole reason why we have that designation, mild steel, and we're not calling it iron. And be the reason why for that is because mild steel is good quality. It reaches the standards that we have in so many construction requirements and stuff like that. It's perfectly adequate because it's actually easy to make than high carbon steels. High carbon steels are the type you need for more specific kind of 
jobs and material requirements. And yes, high carbon steel makes better swords than mild steel, but mild steel makes way better swords than just iron swords, my goodness. In fact, the blacksmith who made the Vera Jericho sword knew this so much that he separated the mild steel from the iron. This indicates that he only had so much of this precious, valuable, stronger material to work with, and then was applying it on the parts of the swords in which it was most important to have, to be stronger, the blade. The ridges and handle are iron. Even people in 600 BC knew the material differences between mild steel and iron and applied it in the same way. Put mild steel where it needs to go and use iron because it's cheaper, easier to make and I probably ran out of iron steel on the other parts. And my goodness, can you imagine a mild steel sword going up against bronze or just iron? Wow, I like, you wonder where these mythical tales come from of legendary swords being, you know, magically enchanted and they could chop through other swords. Well, I think we might have some insight what those swords might have originally been like and made out of. Because when you compare material differences and even a slight advancement from iron to mild steel, that's still quite a leap when you compare these objects against one another. And just in case you're thinking that the academic community are only referring to mild steel objects as iron, say an iron blade or an iron pick. No, no, no. They even refer to objects of high carbon steel as iron in those examples I previously shared. So there we go, this has been my follow-up video to the Vera Jericho sword, going through in detail my sources and explaining and establishing quite categorically the Vera Jericho sword is indeed mild steel and my goodness is this just an amazing intriguing thing to just look at and study. But there's even more I can share on this subject, so pay attention to when I post my follow-up video on when steel was invented. I hope to see you there and until that time, farewell.